On September 12th, she wrote, hope you're well. I guess you were at Fashion Week. Did she seriously think I was going to Fashion Week? I was barely functioning. I wrote back, no Fashion Week for me. I'm dealing with back to school and doctors and paperwork. The paperwork in question was me collating and compiling a complete record of every email, text, and phone log from the day I joined the inaugural committee until now. I was compiling it for the U.S. District Court for the Southern District of New York. I told Melania, quote, I'm always thinking of you, my dear sweet friend. I miss you. On October 2nd, 2018, I received a grand jury subpoena from the U.S. Attorney's Office for the Southern District of New York. I also received a sealed order issued by the U.S. District Court for the Southern District that prohibited me from disclosing, among other things, the fact of my subpoena for 180 days. I couldn't breathe a word to anyone for months because this had to be kept confidential from the inaugural committee and from the White House. The investigations were underway, and they couldn't know. I wasn't allowed to tell anyone, and that included Melania. On December 13th, 2018, the news came out that Manhattan federal prosecutors had opened a criminal probe into the inauguration spending and into whether some of the committee's top donors had traded cash for access to the Trump administration. The accounting didn't delineate where and how the donations had come in. Investigators were looking into whether extravagant donation packages offered FaceTime with officials and if selling access explained the Trump inauguration's record-shattering $107 million cost, $50 million more than any other inaugural ever. She says, quote, my second subpoena came from the House Permanent Select Committee on Intelligence. The third subpoena came from the District of Columbia. I cooperated fully with both. These investigations are still underway. On January 22, 2020, the D.C. Attorney General's office filed suit against the inaugural committee and the Trump International Hotel. The charge was misuse of nonprofit funds, which they'd used to pay outrageous fees to the family's own business. D.C.'s Attorney General Carl Racine stated, District law requires nonprofits to use their funds for the stated public purpose, not to benefit private individuals or companies. The suit cited emails between me and Rick Gates. The details are stomach-churning. The hotel wanted to charge the inaugural committee $3.6 million for event space, food, and drinks over eight days. The inaugural events only spanned four days. The amount of $450,000 per day was, quote, significantly more than the Trump Hotel's internal pricing guidelines for use of this event space, per the lawsuit. The Trump Organization called the lawsuit a PR stunt and vigorously denied any wrongdoing. There was no comment publicly from Team Tom Barrick. But Stephanie Wolkoff, Stephanie Winston Wolkoff writes in her new book, quote, I can say now that my official comment is, you go, D.C. Attorney General Carl Racine. <laughs>